Today I am in Epcot and we are here to take a look at Spaceship Earth. Josh and I did a video like this a while ago about Haunted Mansion and we basically talked about the history and secrets of Haunted Mansion. And we had a couple of people asking us if we would do some more videos like that so today I decided to do it about Spaceship Earth. If you don't know what Spaceship Earth is, it's the massive ball that you see when you're walking into Epcot. It is Spaceship Earth is the attraction but some people know it as the Epcot ball. It is the, it's the icon of Epcot. It did open in 1982 with Epcot and it took 26 months to build. 26 months. That is a long time. That's a little over two years. It stands 180 feet tall and it took 1700 tons of steel to build it. Disney Imagineering actually hired MIT to conduct the engineering studies on the sphere that is Spaceship Earth so that they would know how to actually construct it. And although it's somewhat oblong, thus it's not a perfect sphere, Spaceship Earth is considered the world's first geodesic sphere. The concept of this geodesic sphere came from Buckminster Fuller, who also coined the term Spaceship Earth in his 1969 book, An Operating Manual for Spaceship Earth. Later on, I invented, invented the term spaceship earth and if you didn't know this which i didn't until recently it's actually two spheres so it's the outside that you can see and then the inside sphere is the actual attraction and they're actually about two feet away from each other now the ball itself is held up by six legs and each of these six legs are supported by pylons that are sunk into the ground anywhere from 120 to 185 feet. And the ball itself at the lowest point, like the lowest point you can see, is 18 feet off the ground. But did you know that it actually weighs 16 million pounds? Yeah, 16 million pounds. Also, fun fact, in the Living Seas Aquarium, Spaceship Earth can actually fit inside there. You know, you would think this giant ball is the biggest thing in Epcot, but it's actually not. The aquarium is. Spaceship Earth itself in diameter is 165 feet, and the aquarium is 203 feet. Well, I know it's bright and sunny here today at Epcot, but have you ever been here when it's been raining and stood underneath Spaceship Earth? You would think that the rain would run off the sides and drip on you, but it doesn't. And this is because there's a drainage system that absorbs the rainwater into a gutter system and then it channels it into underground drains where it's funneled out into World Showcase Lagoon, which is pretty awesome. And so speaking of the outside of Spaceship Earth, did you know that there's actually a trap door at the very top? And so whenever I was driving in today, I was actually looking at the top because you can actually see a teeny tiny pool in the distance on the top of Spaceship Earth. And that's because in commercials, whenever they were first opening up Epcot and doing like print ads and all that stuff, they were actually having Mickey stand on top of the Epcot ball. For him to safely stand up there and not hopefully not fall off, they had a pole up there and they would attach him to the pole, just like they do in parade floats. Epcot Center at Walt Disney World in Florida. Aloka Bond was chosen for the exterior because even after accelerated time testing for weathering, there was no discernible deterioration of the finish. In fact, the panels actually remained smoother than glass. Technicians even created artificial lightning to test the effects of strikes on the paneling. I thought that was pretty interesting. All right, so now let's get towards the inside and go into the attraction. Now, as you enter Spaceship Earth, there's a giant mural on the outside. It's 24 feet by 18 feet. It was painted by Claudio Mazzoli, who is from Milano, Italy. It took two months to complete this mural, and NASA actually provided the research for the astronaut suit that was shown and also the information on the spaceship and satellite that were represented in this mural. The mural depicted two different aspects of communication, the development of communications over time from the period of the caveman to the future man and communications over distance from Earth to satellites. 
So if you didn't know this, your ride vehicle is actually known as a time machine. At the very beginning of the ride, and then once you're at the very top of the ride, there's a narrator off to the side that actually tells you, attention time travelers, your time machine is about to rotate for your return to Earth. Attention travelers, please remain it's kind of funny because when the attraction actually first opened and you got to the top of the ball where your time machine had to turn around, they didn't actually have like the technology yet for that to happen. Cast members actually had to stand there and manually turn each car backwards so it could go back down the ball. And basically the reason it goes, has to go backwards is because it would be really, really steep going back down that climb. If you've never been on Spaceship Earth, something to know is this attraction is basically about history. Now as you will soon see, Spaceship Earth's theme is communications, civilization and communications from Stone Age to Information Age. Which, once you've been on it, and if you have been on it, that actually makes sense. Spaceship Earth has gone through four narrators. The first narrator was Vic Perrin, who narrated Spaceship Earth from its debut in 1982 to 1986. Then came along Walter Conkite's narration. The broadcast journalist narration was featured on Disney's ride until 1994. The third narrator was Jeremy Irons. And if you don't know who Jeremy Irons is, he's actually Scar from The Lion King. His narration was replaced in 2007 with the current narrator, Judy Dench. When Judy Dench became the narrator in 2007, touchscreens were added, a new soundtrack was featured, and several scenes were changed. The post-ride area, now known as Project Tomorrow, also went through several changes. It was known first as Earth Station when Spaceship Earth first opened, and then it wasn't until 2007 when they finally changed it into Project Tomorrow. There are interactive games that you can play, some of which are kind of challenging. <laughs> I will show you. I played one of the games and I was having difficulty. As you ride through Spaceship Earth, some of the documents, machines, and some of the scenes are actual replicas of originals. So for example, the steam press and the printing press scene is actually a duplicate of the original press designed by William Bullock. And in the scene in Ancient Egypt, the hieroglyphics on the walls are actual recreations of actual writings while the pharaoh's letter held by one of the animatronics is a duplicate of an actual letter sent by an Egyptian pharaoh to one of his agents. In the very beginning when it's sort of like that caveman scene, it's actually called the Cro-Magnon scene. The animal skulls in this scene include a saber-toothed tiger, a lion, a cave bear, and two dire wolves. They were cast from molds of actual animals in a paleolithic collection of the page museum in Los Angeles. Now I already mentioned the Egyptian scene but there's just so much cool stuff from that scene. The hieroglyphics are accurate and the gods Anubis, Soker, and Thoth are all represented in there. Now Disney did a lot of reusing audio animatronics throughout the years in multiple attractions. Spaceship Earth has a lot. The Egyptian priest in this scene they actually say that it's William Taft from the Hall of Presidents. The Latin inscription which appears on the entrance to the Roman scene comes from the first of the 12 tables of the Roman law that were codified about 451 BC. And these were regarded by later Romans as the foundation of all of their laws. The laws were originally written on bronze tablets and placed in the marketplace for all to see and discuss. The statue in the Roman scene is Augustus. And this Roman senator here, they say that it's Teddy Roosevelt. From the Hall of Presidents. Now the one Turk that is sitting on the floor on the front right, he is known as John Tyler from the Hall of Presidents. Lots of Hall of Presidents here. <laughs> and the writing monk you see sitting here was formerly John Adams in the Hall of Presidents. Now the printer pulling the tray used to be Andrew Jackson from the Hall of Presidents and then Gutenberg himself was James Buchanan in the Hall of Presidents and the printer doing the pressing was Andrew Carnegie from American Adventure. Switching it up here. <laughs> now the Renaissance scene is probably one of my favorite scenes in this attraction. The male musician is shown playing the lute and the female musician is shown playing the lyra. Now there is debate on who these musicians were in a former attraction. Some say that it was Dwight D. Eisenhower from the Hall of Presidents and then I also hear that it's the father and daughter from Carousel of Progress. Let us know what you think about that one in the comments below. 
So now the steam press, which dominates the newspaper scene, was designed from the actual patent drawings filed by William Bullock in 1863. The newspaper is a reproduction of the New York Daily. So the calendar in the telegraph scene is a copy of a calendar from 1867 by Hatch & Co, supplied by Smithsonian Institution from the collection of Business Americana. The Magnetico switchboard was fabricated from an actual Mata circa 1898 and was supplied by AT&T. The telegraph operator used to be Matthew Brady on the American Adventure, and the reporter used to be the store owner on the American Adventure. And then the sound engineer used to be Matthew Brady, also <laughs> from the American Adventure. When you're coming to the end here, Disney Imagineers say that the computer guy seen sitting in the garage inventing his own personal computer is a compilation of all those who made efforts into creating PCs. Now, if you've never been on Spaceship Earth, I definitely think you need to give it a try. I ride this attraction probably every time I come here. We love Spaceship Earth and you can seriously see something different every single time you ride it. And now after you watch this, go back and ride it and see if you can pick up on these things that I just talked about. Let us know what's your favorite thing about Spaceship Earth.